What's up guys and gals? This will be an overview for the Kenneth Hahn disc golf course. I'm going to start off with just a general overview and the main part will be uh, drone footage of every individual hole. So feel free to skip ahead if that's what you're looking for. So Kenneth Hahn uh, disc golf course is located in the Kenneth Hahn State Park in Los Angeles, uh, more specifically the Culver City area. Uh, main entrance is off of La Cienega, parking $6 on the weekends, free on the weekdays. Just once you enter that main entrance, uh, drive all the way down, uh, the very far, you, far as you can go, and that'll bring you to the disc golf course area. A uh, decent amount of parking, but it does fill up. So if it does fill up, you're allowed to just park on along that access road. So just line up there and you should be good. The walking path all along the perimeter is the only out of bounds, and it doesn't even come into play very often. There's also no mandatories, so that makes it kind of beginner friendly, but you do need to be able to throw really far for this course. I'd say be able to throw 300 feet accurately, and then even 350, 400 feet max if you want to birdie and par everything. So pretty long course, so bring whatever uh, you know your max distance drivers are because you're going to need them. Also know, obviously, it's a nine hole course, so if you want to do a full 18, you can do the nine twice. Uh, there's also a really cool back nine remix on UDisc right now. Uh, I like it quite a bit, so you can check that out if you want to mix it up a bit. This review is going to focus just on this main nine, though. Here's the main sign you're going to see when you park. It'll be right next to hole one, so it'll get you started. Also note the uh, Facebook page down there. I've met the guy who runs it. He's a really nice guy. He does some of the course maintenance and things like that. He's also been organizing some doubles events on Sundays, so hopefully we keep that active and have some fun things going, so feel free to check that out. T-pads uh, are this interestingly um, like rubber material. Uh, I like it quite a bit. It lets you get some good rotation um, without worrying about slipping. So I wish they were longer, but overall I like them. T signs, nothing too crazy, pretty standard there. They do have sponsors, and that's because the city didn't put in this uh, in the baskets. It's uh, done through sponsors and donations, uh, so that's pretty cool. It is a newer course, I think in, I don't know, late 2019, early 2020 when the baskets were put in, so these are pretty new. Uh, nothing too fancy there. But they do have these cool arrows that point you to the next uh, tee pad, which is really useful sometimes if you're newer because some of the tee pads are a little hard to find. So with that, I will jump right into the hole by hole guide, and I hope to see you at the Han. Hole one, par three, coming in at 327 feet. Uh, it's difficult to see, but the basket is nestled between that big uh, bunch of trees out there in the distance. Right off the tee box, you got two other trees that block your field of view a little bit. It's it's pretty wide there, so it shouldn't cause you too much trouble. What will cause you trouble, though, is that this, this giant slope you're playing on. That way, if you're a backhand player and you throw a little bit too overstable of a disc, uh, you'll end up way down the hill. If you throw an understable disc, you could end up on the top side of the hill, which I think is actually even worse place to be because then you're going to have to throw down the hill next shot. And you're still going to have a lot of those trees over there on the right side. You got to go under all those. It gets pretty tricky. Uh, beware, though, if it's windy out and you even choose a slightly understable disc, it could push your disc way up to the right, uh, very far. And there's a walking path up there, which is OB. So if you got a forehand, great play to use on this one. You just chuck it out there to the left, let it sail back in. Usually will set you up for a pretty easy three. Uh, if you have a really good forehand, or maybe you flex a backhand really nicely, you can try to push that disc under the tree line as far as possible for a putt at birdie. Just be aware you have to push it pretty far under that, that tree line to actually get within circle one. Hole two, par three. Note that the T sign says it's 277 feet. That's definitely not correct, and I'm pretty sure it's a typo, and it should be 377 feet. Anyways, you're on top of a hill throwing way down, so normal rules apply here. Uh, keep your trajectory flat and ideally even down, uh, which can be a little tricky on this one because you're not right at the crest of the hill. The tee pad's about 20 feet back. But if you throw something, you know, flat or down that you know goes straight, you know, maybe just a little bit of turn or a little bit of flex that, you know, ends left though for you successfully, you will should be have a nice birdie look. If you make a mistake, uh, don't throw fast enough or something, or it, or it fades out early, you're going to end up way, way left, and you're on top of a hill, so that mistake gets exaggerated. Same thing on the other side, too flippy, or Anheuser or something, you're going to end up way right. 
and that that's especially exaggerated during the windy time but if you do make a mistake like that uh it's usually not the end of the world in this hole there's some trees down below but they're not too dense so you're normally going to have some kind of a look to save your par hole three par three 285 feet wide open box so you got really no danger there but the basket is completely surrounded by very bushy trees so with the biggest openings on the left there so a really nice play is a forehand if you can swing it out wide and have it crash in the opening you're gonna have about a 15 20 foot uh slightly uphill putt for the birdie now that's not the only way to get a birdie on this hole the uh the trees are th pretty bushy and thick there as you can see but you can slide it under there's you know one or two feet of clearance so a straight shot or even a maybe a little bit of hyzer shot up the hill and then swinging back in as long as it comes in low you're going to get under that tree line and then if you get under the tree line even a little bit you're going to have a look at birdie uh, so even if you don't execute perfectly you know pars are pretty easy to pick up to on this hole uh, as long as you're out there a little bit, even if you're left or short, you just got to be able to slide it under the tree, and you're probably going to be fine. Trouble comes if you're on the top side. You know, if you turn something over and end up up there, there's a few spots that you don't really have a very good angle to get under the tree. Um, and there's usually a bunch of dead leaves around the basket, so the ground play can be a little fast. Uh, and it's on a slope, so missed putts and things like that are how you would end up with bogeys on this hole. After a short walk uphill, you'll find yourself at the tee box for hole number four. Uh, really beautiful, nice view up there. I think you're at the highest point in the uh, disc golf area. But a very, very difficult hole. Um, the pin is over 400 feet away from you. You're way up in the air. And the green is pretty much completely surrounded by trees. There is a opening uh, right in the front. So if you have a nice laser line shot, you can get there. I've seen shots that just aim straight at the pin, and there's a little bit of turn on the disc, and once it gets past the gap, that's when it starts fading, that'll leave you in a pretty good spot. I've also seen shots that go way out to the right, and then when they fade in, they're trying to get under the tree. I think if you had an absolute cannon for an arm, you could probably go above all the trees and then just bomb in that way. Uh, that would be, you, you would need a giant arm for that though. If you are not the don't throw your best shot, you end up on the left or right, uh, you're, you're going to be in a tough spot. You're either going to have to go over the trees, which are very tall, um, but doable, or you're going to have to have another shot that goes under trees that, you know, depending upon where you are, you could have between two and five feet of clearance. So not impossible, especially if you've got far enough out there, but makes your, makes your life hard. Now, if you do make it on the green, it's almost entirely open there is one tree next to the pin so if your approach somehow gets you behind that you may you may not have a look at the putt and that's another way to get bogeys uh, in general though if you get a par on this uh, you're pretty happy uh, birdies i find are very very seldom on this hole welcome to hole five uh, the good news is you are done throwing downhill the bad news is you now have to throw uphill a bit that makes this 338 foot hole play a bit longer than that. So you also got a tree right down the middle of the line you normally want to throw in. So you're going to have to somehow get around that as well. And, you know, just to make it even harder, there's that random brown pole that really shouldn't be in your line. You really should never hit. But it just being there and just in your line of sight, it's, it's just going to mess with your mind. Okay, anyways, uh, if you get it around the tree, you get it up the hill and you finish left. Uh, you'll be rewarded with a nice uh, uphill birdie putt. Could be pretty far, though, still. Like I said, it's a pretty far hole. If you're like, oh, I need all the distance, so I'm going to pick a little more understable disc to help me out, and you turn it over and end up on the right, well, now you have to go around those trees for your approach. Uh, it's doable if you're approaching as well, but it makes it a bit harder for sure. Uh, so really, if you're a beginner, and if you can just get it in the middle of the fairway and pass that first tree, you're, you're probably in pretty good shape. Now, right by the pin, right behind it, is another big tree. Uh, so if your approach goes long and you slide under that, you may block yourself off. Uh, you know, and that, that, would, that would be sad and you get a bogey because of it. Hole six, par three, 
another really long one coming in at over 400 feet. I think it's 405 feet. Uh, flat land at least. Pretty wide open fairway. So nothing there, but you got to get it way out there. You may choose to go with a more of an understable disc to help you out. I think that's a great idea. Just do not turn it over because this is the only other hole where the OB comes into play and you can see the walking path there on the right. Now, if you biff your shot even harder than that and you go over the walking path, there is some very, very thick shrubbery over there and it could be pretty difficult to find your disc. So really try to avoid that. Uh, we call that the Anheuser Busch uh, because, well, that should be self-explanatory. Uh, anyways, if you bomb it out there, you get away out there, and you're in the center of the fairway, you're still going to have to go under the tree because the basket is beyond uh, probably like 20 feet beyond the trunk of the tree, but still guarded underneath the branches of that tree. So you still got to slide it under there. Uh, if you end up on the right side, it's a little bit more open. There's a little bit of an opening where you can kind of sneak it in without going under the tree, so that's good. If you're way on the left side and way out there, it's also completely open. So maybe you've got a forehand and, and you get it out there, you might be able to use a forehand approach to uh, put yourself with a nice, easy uh, putt. Birdies, man, you would just have to have an absolute bomb of a drive, either going all the way around that tree and then fading back in or something or, or skipping under the tree. So really, really difficult uh, hold a birdie. I've never done it. Hole seven, par three. I think this is the second shortest uh, hole of the course at 281 feet. I mean, additionally, once you get past those first set of trees, it's all downhill. So that makes it play even shorter than that. A few different ways you can play this hole. Uh, right off the bat, you can see there's a gap, obviously, between those two trees. If you have basically like a nice tunnel shot and throw it right in between that gap and have it just keep sailing forward, it'll keep going and it should rest you nicely at the pin. Uh, another way to do it is you can go basically over the tree. So if you backhand hyzer or just flat over the top on the right there uh, and have it try to fade back in, you need to throw pretty far to do that because you're going way out of your way and you're going to be throwing uphill. So you're going to be losing some, some juice that way, but doable. Forehand, same basic thing. Go over the tree on the left-hand side and have it drop back in. Uh, the pin is not on really a lot of grass, actually. It's a lot of dirt, mostly. So I find that it plays a little funny and kind of skips sometimes. It also gopher holes, give you some weird bounces and things like that. So just on your approach, make sure you baby it a little bit. Uh, just be aware, you might get some weird skips, so be extra careful. Other than that, you should be okay. It's one of the easier ones to par. And if you have a good drive, you can definitely birdie this guy. Hole eight, uh, another par three at 287 feet. This one is a sharp dog leg to the right. So forehand is the obvious play. Just throw it straight up high with enough height so in the fade it can make it all the way down to its basket. Uh, if you go low and try to skip it or something, there are quite a bit of gopher holes and the grass can get a little thick, so uh, probably best just to go high. Now if your forehand absolutely sucks, you're gonna probably do a backhand turnover shot. So just try to you know bust out one of your flippy disc, throw it straight, and have it try to turn just around that tree and you're going to be looking nice. Uh, interesting in this hole, like off the tee box, that, that, that first big tree to the left there, those branches hang a lot lower than they look. And so, you know, when I'm throwing backhand, I really have to concentrate on not throwing it that way. I don't know, like, like when I do a turnover, I want to go wide, it feels like, and those hang pretty low, so I hit those more often than I'd like. So just make sure you really throw it straight there. Um, and even if you don't really have a turnover or have a, have, a, have a bad forehand, if you just throw it out straight beyond that tree, then you're going to have a wide open look at the pin. There is some other trees behind the pin that can either act as a backdrop for you to have it drop and give you an easy putt, or if you skid under them, it may give you a bit of an obstructed putt. But not the hardest hole. All right, we have made it to hole number nine, the very last hole of the course. This one is the only par four, but it is 500 feet uh, uphill. So bust out whatever dish you can throw the farthest and let her rip. Uh, if you have an arm, you are definitely 100% attacking this hole for birdie. So uh, if you see that green patch out there, it's a bright green patch of grass. It's always there. Don't know why it's there, but it is always there. I think there's a busted sprinkler. And so it's just a never ending garden of Eden growing, but it makes a great marker for disc golf. So get it past that green patch uh, and you're going to be close enough to attack for birdie. 
Um, the right side is probably a little bit easier because you can see the big opening and it's a pretty standard uh, shot through there. Just throw it through there and it's going to fade towards the pin. Uh, if you're not on the right-hand side, it's 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 probably fine. You can go over the trees actually at that point. And there's usually, I mean, it, it can be a little tricky to get past the trees on the left, but there's usually a way to do it, especially if you have a forehand. Uh, then 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 you're looking okay. Uh, now, if you don't have the distance to do this hole in four, no problem. It's still a very fun hole. You get to do a full Maverick's power shot, and then you get to do it again and again and again until you make it to the hole. So you're gonna have a lot of good practice, you know, with your your max power distance shots, seeing how far you can get perfect in your form. Once you get to the pin, uh, nothing too crazy. It's a little bit of a slope, so you could have a roll away. Uh, and also know it's actually the very first pin you're going to see when you come to the course. So sometimes you'll see people practice putting. If you are doing that yourself, no problem. Just be aware and back up so the people playing the hole can actually play through in peace. So that concludes the main nine review of the Kenneth Hahn Disc Golf Course. Once I play the back nine remix a bit more, get some drone footage of that, might do a review of that sometime in the future. You can see from my outtake footage here that the Kennethon disc golf area is actually quite a nice park and not something you'd necessarily expect to find in Los Angeles. You've got pretty good uh, elevation uh, around the bowl area, so you get some really nice views of the mountains and the, you know, the Los Angeles buildings out there. So come check it out, and I hope to see you at the Hong.